Now, 47th Congressional District. Uh, which encompasses which cities? Long Beach, where we are, out to where Tibor lived in Garden Grove. So it's Garden Grove, Westminster, Western Orange County, and Long Beach. Is there a precedent for having a, a, a VA medical center named after a, a Holocaust survivor who may have served in the U.S.? This is the first time that a medical center has ever been named after a Holocaust survivor, U.S. member, a win, somebody who earned the Congressional Medal of Honor, who was liberated by the U.S. military after the Second World War, was so moved this became his adopted country, came to this country, joined the military, and saved literally 40 to 150, we don't know how many, saved his platoon, was captured by the Chinese, saved prisoners, in, in the camp by finding food and, and, and then came back and became a, a great volunteer here at, at the VA, both received services and sp literally gave hundreds and hundreds of hours of community service. This is, this is Tibor's home besides his own home with his family, but this is, you're now, we're now in Tibor's community, and Tibor is loved in this community, and what an honor now to recognize a Jewish veteran who, who gave to this country, won the Congressional Medal of Honor, a Holocaust survivor, and now the Tibor Rubin VA Medical Center will forever be known in his name. People will always remember. This is one of the great medical centers of the nation. This is not a small medical center. You go around. This is one of the primary. We just, you look at the resources and the facilities. This is one of the nation's largest and finest medical centers, and it now bears the name of Tibor Rubin. My name is Walt Dannenberg. I'm the medical center director for the Tibor Rubin Medical Center. Uh, Tibor Rubin, known to uh, many by, as the name as Ted or Uncle Ted, and he touched the lives of so many people. So when the idea came uh, through congressional uh, Alan Lowenthal, uh, the family members of, of Tibor Rubin, it really was a community effort to recognize the trials and tribulations that he went through as an individual and the man that he became. And uh, it was our opportunity, and thankfully Congress passed the bill into law that we became the Tibor Rubin Medical Center and to really pay homage to a very special individual. Event. Rabbi Engel, if I can invite you to the stage, please. This is a historic event in the annals of Long Beach history. The VA Medical Center gets named after an American hero. As the psalmist says, Ze hayom asa Hashem nogila v'nis This day which God has made, let us be glad and rejoice on it. As a young teenager, Tibor Rubin was freed from Mauthausen concentration camp. He then promised himself that he would thank the American army by fighting as a G.I. Joe. True to his promise, he enlisted in the army and displayed the heroism for which he received the Congressional Medal of Honor. His sergeant gave Rubin the most dangerous missions, and his self-sacrifice proved him worthy of great honor. His comrades recommended he receive the Congressional Medal of Honor for his bravery and his dedication to his comrades in arms. The sergeant's response was, no Jew will ever receive this honor under my watch. His risking his life again and again for his fellow soldiers went unrecognized. Many of the soldiers whose lives he had saved, as well as the Jewish war veterans, were on a campaign for America to recognize this hero. And so in 2005, 55 years after the Korean War, he received his due, the Congressional Medal of Honor. President Bush acknowledged at his presentation that it was due to prejudice that he received this honor 55 years late. Look up Tibor Rubin on the internet and see for yourself his amazing accomplishments. As his personal friend and rabbi for the last 45 years, I merited to be in the White House with him for this great event. His parents taught him to value the importance of human life and to extend himself to others regardless of race, color, and creed. 
Tibor often told me that he accepted this honor for himself and for the Jewish people. The day after the ceremony in Washington, Tibor went to the synagogue. He was honored by being called up to the Torah, and as he said the blessings and later the Kaddish memorial prayer, he cried like a baby. He later explained that as he said these prayers, he thought of all his comrades who were killed in battle, and this made him break out in tears. Let us all be ready to help our fellow human beings, regardless of race, color, or creed. Tibor, or Ted as I called him, was a shining example of humanity at its best. He always had a joke, a friendly word, and a smile. Almighty God, please bestow your blessings upon this crowd gathered here to honor a proud American and a proud Jew. Almighty God, give us the strength and resolve to become better human beings who will work towards making this world a safer and kinder place. Almighty God, bless us with a world in which wars will cease and peace reign supreme. God bless you all, and God bless America. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Dannerberg to join us. He's the director of our hospital here, and he will take the helm of our new, newly named facility. And during those conversations, it would not be uncommon for me to have an interaction with a, a family member or even one of our employees and talk about Mr. Rubin. Uh, there was a lot of excitement around the passage of the law, which allowed us to be renamed our medical facility here after, after Tibor Rubin. But what was more important to me was the story behind Mr. Rubin. Not only did he go through many harrowing experiences during his life, but the, the values he possessed and that he exemplified showed through and the through interactions he had with our employees and the memories that he helped create. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to our employees and fellow veterans who had an experience in knowing Tiber personally and walking away from those experiences feeling that he truly touched the lives of others. And so with that, I am very honored and humbled to be before you today as the medical center director for the Tiber Rubin VA Medical Center, but to also remember and honor an American hero who possessed and embodies the values that we so hold dear. Uh, I can't think of anything that has pleased me more in my five years as a member of Congress. You know, uh, it's just a great honor. It's the right thing to do at the right time, and that's what makes it so special. So a little bit about what I, some of my thoughts. What makes a man a hero? We t heard about Tibor as a hero. We, there's no denying that on the field of battle that Tibor or we heard Ted Rubin was a hero of the highest caliber. caliber. And while we're going to honor those exploits today, there's more to the character or his character than just his victories in combat. There's much more to Tibor Rubin. For while many have known, and people here knew of Tibor, uh, in terms of the war hero, many, many more people are here today who knew Tibor the man. That's why they're here for Tibor. He brought so much joy to so many people. He, he had a great sense of humor. Man that moved through life with a strength of character that everyone around him recognized despite the adversities and the horrors that he lived through, he did not let that darkness dim his character. That's not who he was. He refused to let it define him. He lived a long life as a good man, a good father, and to the people of Garden Grove, a good neighbor. Uh, I'm, I was thankful to have had the opportunity to meet him and to spend some time with him. I joined him in 2014 at a ceremony in Garden Grove to celebrate the first United States Postal Service stamp, which honored the extraordinary courage of the 145 
Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Service members who received the Medal of Honor in the Korean War, and he was there to receive as, as that stamp was unveiled. It was a very moving experience. And when the, uh, I was there also when the city of Garden Grove renamed a library in his honor, complete with a bronze bust. And then, you know, I learned, as many people here have, what everybody else has already known. He was a hero in every aspect. He was brave, he was selfless, he was intimately concerned about the well-being of those around. It's only fitting that the Tibor Rubin VA Medical Center bears his name because it's another place where his character shone through. While spending many hours as a patient here, he also spent many, many hours as a volunteer, helping other, giving of himself to the other veterans. Anne Frank wrote in her diary, the final forming of a person's character, the final forming of a person's character is in their own hands. If this is true, Tibor forged a character of integrity, moral courage, and compassion that we can all use as a model. He's a hero for all of us, and I'm very, very pleased again to be here to honor this wonderful institution and in the naming of it. Thank you. I am really honored also to present, to, uh, I think, to the, to, the, to the new facility, really, to the Tibor Rubin uh, VA Medical Center in the 114th Congress of the United States at the second session to name the Department of Veterans Affairs Healthcare System in Long Beach, California, the Tibor Rubin VA Medical Center being enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. The naming of this, signed by the Speaker, signed by uh, the President Pro Tem, and signed by the President of the United States. Stuart, we've known for many years. I'll, I'll read just a portion of what he does, and then I'll explain why he's a part of our family. After graduating from the Royal Academy of Art with a degree in fine art and graphic, and eventually, he eventually found his way to the United States, where two years after he arrived in the United States, and on a green card, if I'm not mistaken, yes. he was drafted into the United States Army, <laughs> where he served for two years. <laughs> and I should mention that, of course, he served honorably. So, welcome to the United States. <laughs> in 1997, he was invited to join the United States Air Force Art Program, which this is where we got to meet him, and this is where I find him to be incredibly unique. Part of his function when he was with the United States Air Force was to uh, capture the history of what was occurring at that time via portrait, and his portraits, uh, of which we are the recipient of actually three of them at our, four of them, I think, in our hospital right now, but some of his, five of them, sorry, five of them. Um, some of his paintings, um, if I understood correctly, are exhibited internationally, which includes for, the, for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth at the, in, um, in London, but he also has some originals in the Pentagon, and I believe in one or two presidential libraries. He'll correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure I was. Correct. I'm correct, okay, ding, ding, ding for me. So he came to my office, um, yeah, maybe four months ago and said, Rich, I want to do something. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to make a portrait of Tibor for the hospital. And if, for any of you who don't know, I mean, to have something that you would commission is not an easy or, it's not something that traditionally we are funded to, to provide for our hospital. And... Um, how could I, obviously I was not going to say no, and not only uh, after I saw the mock-ups and, and he, the iterations as he was working on it, working on it, 
Uh, I just thought that it was phenomenal that he would feel so moved by the story that he would give of his time and his treasure to paint this portrait for us. Um, so this portrait will, when construction's done in about a year in our main lobby, which will be beautiful, um, will hold this portrait, but more importantly, the naming will be very clear as you walk into our hospital in the main entrance. The name will be present, the portrait will be there. Um, and we have a plan C that I would say is that over time, we don't want the history of Tibor to be lost. So what we will do, other than hosting the portrait and having the naming in our main lobby, is we're going to find a wall in the hospital where we can be more expressive with his story and take about 30 or 40 feet or 20 feet, whatever I get away with, to, to tell the story. So that for generations to come, it's not just a random building named after somebody that we do not remember, but in fact, we will see him by face, we will know him by name, and we'll be able to look at something that tells his story on 20 to 30 foot. That will take us some time uh, because of construction, but um, we are grateful that we get to receive this portrait. So we'll do the unveiling, and then I have a, one last surprise after that. So with that, okay. So uh, with that, Walt Stewart, show us the portrait. So just so you know, Rosie is the daughter to Tibor Rubin and Frank is the son. And this is your copy of the original uh, to keep as yours. Yeah. Frank, don't worry, I didn't forget you. And actually, we'll, Frank will do yours as well. So we'll grab the second one and present that to Frank at this time and do a few photos. But wait, there's more. I'd like to ask um, Colonel Singer to come up. These copies resonated with the organization, so Stuart hand-painted uh, the Jewish war veteran emblem on the bottom left so that you know your participation in bringing this day to fruition. Attitude. Everyone of, of all, all faiths seemed to be for this. Tibor was, you know, what, what I try to say, he's a hero not just because of his military service or what he did before. Tibor came to this hospital and, and he made people feel good. He made the other veterans here. He brought things for them. He, he went with walks with them. Tibor Rubin is beloved in this hospital. What does this mean to the uh, Rubin clan? This means a lot. Um, I have personally worked here for 25 years. To see my dad's name uh, and renamed after my dad is special, special to the Jewish people also, like my dad would say. But this means a lot to the family. This is a big recognition of my dad, which is due a long time ago, but it's, it, it's recognized and we're so happy. To honor Tibor Rubin, um, uh, in my, my mind was an absolute blessing uh, to have the opportunity to thank this amazing medical facility that saved my life in 2015. Um, I, I needed to, to do something to say thank you to an organization and to a man that I never met. But when I was 18, I visited the death camp Matthausen Gusen in Austria, and that memory has stayed with me over the years. And the fact is that in reading the book and reading his history and talking to people, I was so moved that I had to, to say something and do something. And uh, the Lord gave me a gift and I continue to try and do my best for my God. Mm -hmm. 
didn't. Uh, I got a call one day from our former chairman at the Jewish War Veterans, Bob Zweiman, out of Washington, D.C., and he said, Greg, would you be willing to spearhead an effort to get that VA hospital renamed in honor of Tibor? And I said, yes, sir, Mr. Zweiman, it would be my honor. But he was subjected to, to great anti-Semitism while he was in the military. And he overcame that, protected his, all his troops knew that he was sent on the most dangerous missions. He was not, you know, he was discriminated by the, by his, by the, the sergeant. But Tibor overcame that. It's a wonderful story about how goodness and courage overcomes hatred and divisiveness. Do you think his, uh, his experience in the camps prepared him to cope with life in the uh, Korean POW camp? For sure, for sure. He knew how to survive and a lot. Of, he told me a lot of Americans did not know how to survive, they wanted to give up. But he'd been through the Holocaust so he didn't want to give up. Yeah. And he, he tried to help out the, the weakest soldiers, the ones who wanted to give up. He, he told me stories about that in the POW camp. And so he helped out, saved lives, stole food. He did all these crazy things where he, if he was caught, he'd be executed right on the spot. And plus, people don't remember that he, um, he, they offered him to go back to Hungary. And bye, guys. Um, they offered him back to go to Hungary, and he, he refused. He says, you're not born in this country. I, I refuse to go, I'm going to help out my fellow soldiers. If I die, I die. But I'm not giving up on my fellow soldiers. So he could have gotten out there, but that's his character, my dad's character. Ne uh, you know, no, don't give up. And he wasn't going to give up. He wasn't going to let a fellow, a fellow soldier back. He would stay with him till his death if he had to. I just want to say that it's a great honor for not only the Jewish war veterans and Tibor Rubin, it's a great honor for California, it's a great honor for Garden Grove, his hometown, and it's a great honor for the city of Long Beach to have a facility, a U.S. government facility of this magnitude and stature named for a resident of the community. This hospital will, will make sure that everybody in future generations knows the story of this Holocaust survivor, military hero, and wonderful human being. This tells the story of America. This is not, and the, and the role of the Jewish Americans in America, just like there are roles of other immigrant groups in America.